here we have the Samsung S20 Ultra. The spec sheet, insane. 108 megapixels and shoots 8K video. What? I usually try to ignore spec sheets because sometimes they can kind of mislead you on what gives you a good image. But a camera phone that shoots 8K video, I just could not pass it up. But what's more impressive to me is actually the sensor size. The wide angle on the S20 and the S20 Plus have a one over 1.76 inch sensor, which is cool because that's larger than my iPhone's one over 2.55 inch. But the S20 Ultra has a one over 1.33 inch sensor and that is also paired with an f1.8 lens. The bigger sensor and the faster lens should give us a shallower depth of field, which basically translates into blurrier backgrounds, making your camera feel more professional. You could actually see the big old aperture in the wide angle lens right here in the middle. We also have up top a ultra wide angle, which is pretty standard, and also a telephoto lens down below. Wait a second, do you guys hear that? Oh, that's the camera moving around on there. It goes away after you turn on the video because the stabilization turns on. Listen, it's gone now. But let's start off by taking a few photos at 108 megapixels, test that out, and then we'll move on to 8K. So let's get going. So I'm gonna take a couple shots at just the standard 12 megapixel mode. And then I'm also gonna take the same exact shot at 108 megapixels. And then we'll see if we can actually tell a difference. <laughs> yeah, look at that face. That's the biker face right there. Now, one thing I have noticed from all the tests I've done in the past is the 108 megapixel also exposes a little bit hotter than the standard version. It's actually really hard to tell the difference between the two at first glance. And even if you zoom in a little bit, it's still pretty close. But once you go way, way in is when you see the clarity advantage to the eight megapixels. In the lower resolution, it seems like there's more of that artificial digital sharpening going on post the 108 megapixel, which actually has that detail. So it doesn't have to do that, but it does also come at a cost. So I'm on my ultra wide, take a few shots and I can punch into my wide angle, take a few shots there. And then my telephoto lens, bam, bam. I just took like 1800 photos just now. So I could utilize all the lenses on here and I could also take the photos pretty quickly. But then when you switch into 108 megapixel mode, then you're kind of stuck on that wide angle lens. And also the photo Photos take longer to process. So you have to take a shot and then wait, and then take a shot and then wait, and take a shot and then wait. So you definitely lose the responsiveness and the agility that you would get in the standard camera mode. I think the big winner is the pro photo mode. In this mode, we are still locked into that wide angle camera, but we now have the option to save the raw files, which I think is awesome if you use Photoshop because then you have full control over the image. Cause I'm not a huge fan of how these photos are always processed. I mean, most of the time it's actually pretty good, but also the camera is doing a lot of assuming. So sometimes it'll razor sharpen a face, which usually isn't very pleasant. Having that full manual control in the raw is awesome. I mean, here's the same photo taken on the iPhone and I generally lean towards the iPhone look, but with the raw files, you could do whatever you want with it. So the 12 megapixel raw ends up being the big winner for me if I'm trying to get the best image I can. And if if I'm shooting for convenience, I'll just be on the standard camera app so I have access to all the lenses. I still think the 108 megapixel is cool. You get to brag to your friends about it. Oh yeah, how many megapixels is your camera? Sam, you know how many megapixels your camera is? Like three. Yeah, loser. Now one downside with that shallower depth of field is that I am starting to miss focus once in a while, which is something that we never really had to worry so much about with camera phones. There is a shallower depth of field because of that larger sensor. There is the live focus feature to artificially blur out the background. And that actually does look surprisingly good in some shots, but of course it's also not perfect. Now when it comes to the lenses, I definitely love the ultra wide, gotta have that now. And then of course our standard wide, but I actually really like the zoom lens on here. It's actually really useful. Like if I have to do a 10X zoom, it's so much clearer on the Samsung because there's less digital zooming that has to take place. So definitely some cool features in this phone. Should we move on to my favorite part, the 8K video? Let's go. So going from 4K to 8K, the very, very first thing I noticed is that there is a crop in. So this is how Sam looks in 4K. And then if I go into 8K, we're in quite a bit closer. I noticed it's about 1.4 to 1.5X of a crop. And this is the widest you can go in 8K. So you are kind of stuck in this tighter lens mode because in 4K mode, I can zoom out back to 1X and I could even go ultra wide. So a lot more flexible in the 4K mode. Now that in 8K, we're in a much tighter frame, then it does become a lot trickier to get a very smooth, stable shot. This is currently one of my favorite phone gimbals is the DJI Osmo Mobile 3. And we do have a sponsor for today's video. So we're doing a giveaway with three of these. So this is gonna give you a nice buttery smooth image even in 8K. 
look at that. So let me do the sponsorship read in 8K and you guys can tell me if the quality looks outstanding or if it just looks pretty average. Let me know. All right, we're rolling in 8K and let's do this. Today's video is sponsored by Audible. They're one of my favorite sponsors because I've been a huge fan of them for years. And since a lot of us have a lot of downtime right now, what better way to spend that than by exposing your mind to new things, staying entertained, engaged, informed. The audiobook that I've been obsessed over lately is Elon Musk by Ashley Vance. And it's very engaging and interesting. I had to get the audiobook because I was so curious about who the man is behind the Tesla. Because ever since we got this thing, it's been blowing my mind at how futuristic it is. The audiobook's been really entertaining because it kind of tells you both the good and the bad and the ugly behind what goes on. It's crazy his way of thinking, doing business and getting the things he wants. The author goes and gets every side of the story, talks to his ex-wife and all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's it's really entertaining. Whether you like SpaceX and Tesla or not, look at this, I'm wearing space shirts now. <laughs> so go ahead and hit that link in the description or go to audible.com forward slash potato jet or text potato jet to 500 500. By the way, every time we cut to a close up, that's all done in editing. And since we have 8K resolution, hopefully the image doesn't break apart too much and thanks to audible sponsoring this video if you hit that link down below you get a 30-day free trial which includes a audiobook of your choice and two audible originals so if you're curious about the elon musk audiobook you can get it for free go to audible.com forward slash potato jet or text potato jet to 500 500 and just start learning today do it and for a chance to win one of the three osmo mobile threes that we're doing a giveaway with just drop a comment down below within the first 12 hours and you will be entered let's head back to the studio but before we do, I'm going to pop this back into AK, pop it on here, try to get a few more 8K shots, see how epic they look. Let's go. Now my first impressions of the AK footage is that it is cool, it is impressive, but it does remind me of what it was like shooting with the 108 megapixel mode where it is gonna be better in quality technically, but I would much rather shoot in the lower resolution. The more we inspect the image, the more we realize the AK does have a bit more detail, so that's cool. But in 4K mode, you don't have to do the 1.4X zoom in to match the same shot as the 8K mode. You can zoom out, utilize the full lens, the full sensor, and even though you're technically only getting 4K instead of 8K, I think you end up with the better overall image. It's just cleaner, nicer, you're more flexible with different lenses. And when you look at it close, the 8K still is superior in terms of the amount of detail when you punch in, but I just like the overall image better on the 4K. And remember, resolution is just a small part of the story. I'm getting around 80 megabits per second in 8K. Now, it's not that much, but it is an HEVC or high efficiency video codec, so it can store a lot of information considering it's only 80 megabits per second, but still it's not that much. I mean, shooting 8K on a pro camera is gonna be over 2000 megabits per second easy. And in 4K, I was getting about 28 megabits per second in HEVC and the iPhone actually gets 39 megabits per second. So when it comes to the bit rate, the iPhone is superior with 4K. But the thing I do like about the Samsung is that depth of field that you do get. The background is noticeably blurrier in the Samsung. so it creates a little bit more separation, a little bit more depth. Depth of field can be a blessing and a curse though, you know? Like if you get the focus right, it looks beautiful, but if you miss it, then it completely ruins the shot. With smaller sensors like the one on the iPhone, a lot more is going to be in focus all the time. So you have to worry less about missing focus, but at the same time, you can't create that depth and separation. The Samsung does have a wide focus though. That's a very funky look. Sometimes it actually looks surprisingly good, but sometimes it looks terrible. I don't think it's reliable for me to ever use it. This looks like you are poorly edited into this frame, like a green screen shot. <laughs> Who knows though, maybe in like five years, that'll be the mode that everyone's shooting on. There's also hyperlapse mode, which is pretty sweet. Always a fun little feature to have. So super slow-mo is gonna be a little bit tricky because it's a very short burst. The moment has to be exact. So we're gonna try to time it perfectly. Fire. <laughs> All right, hopefully we got it. Come on, baby. Oh yeah, we did. It's perfect. Shoo! <laughs> 
<laughs> There's also pro video mode, which basically gives you full manual control over the camera, which is nice because it lets you lock in your shutter speed, your exposure, all that stuff. I have noticed other features like beauty mode and wow, look how it's, oh my God. I look like I'm made out of plastic. I want to rub my own cheeks. Overall, very impressive camera in here. Would I ever use the 8K capabilities or the 108 megapixel photo mode on here? No, but what I'm more impressed about is the lenses on here, the sensor, being able to take raw photos in the native camera app. They're really pushing the boundaries, so hats off to Samsung. Anyways, last week I made a video about the Airy Trinity. Should we go down and see what you guys have been saying in the comments? This guy's name is literally Ari. He was made for this. Yeah, this looks like an affordable and simple vlogging solution. I, I would agree. Imagine buying this and using it with an iPhone 4 as a camera. I bet you it's still actually look pretty epic. Even with a crappy camera, if you have really good stabilization and good lighting, it can turn out pretty good. I also made a ridiculously long video diving through every single menu item on a Sony mirrorless camera. Sony cameras are notorious for having huge menus. It took me three days to film that fucking thing. Sony shooter reads the title. Yeah, this is gonna take much longer than the Tesla menu did. <laughs> yeah, to go through the whole menu of the Sony camera, it took me 48 minutes. On my vlog channel, I did the same thing. It was like a deep dive on the Tesla Model 3 went through the whole user manual and that took me 49 minutes and 44 seconds. So literally to go through the Tesla, it only took me one minute more than it did to go through the freaking Sony menu. And for those of you who are like, what? You have a secondary vlog channel? Yes, I do. We do random stuff over there. For example, today we concocted this thing. It's a plastic bottle cannon. And basically you pull this lever and it just 